Okay, year nine. Um, we're going to do a um, recorded lesson today. Um, just because I think for some of you, it helps to be able to pause and rewind uh, the task that I'm, uh, that, I'm, that I'm explaining and the information. Um, to get a two today, which some, and some of you are failing to get twos on a regular basis, uh, you do need to upload a copy of your work to Firefly and complete the educate that has been set to you. Uh, your title today is Red Clouds War, and today's date is Friday, the 22nd of January. If you could pause the video and write both of those down on your paper, that would be exceptional. So a starter are some events which happened in the American West during the 1860s. And I would like you to try and work out what you think each one of these events are. So all of these things are important things which made migration happen during the 1860s, which is the same time as these Indian wars, which we've been studying. So I'd like you to try and bullet point. There's six things on the board, and I'd like you to try and guess what you think they are. Um, if you want an extension, if you could explain how each factor leads to more tension between tribes and the U.S. government or white settlers, then you're going to be boosting your knowledge on this section. So pause the video and have a go at guessing. Now, what I will say, folks, is there is absolutely zero point in you just waiting for the answers and writing them down. You might as well not be bothering doing the work. So if you can please have an attempt at the work, then uh, unpause the video and then see what answers there are. So pause the video and see how many you know right now. Okay, hopefully you've had a go at that. There are six things which happened in the 1860s which contribute to rising tensions between the whites and the Indians. So number one is the American Civil War. We can see that you've got your red Confederate states and your blue Union states. And remember, this leads to the freedom of the slaves and a lot of people moving out the South. So there's a lot of people settling in the West as a result of the war. Secondly, you've got your cattle drives to the West. So remember, you have the Goodnight Loving Trail, which goes up to Colorado and Wyoming. Uh, and also John Elliott set up his ranch. And you've also got uh, the Chisholm Trail, which goes up to, to Abilene in Kansas, uh, which is where Joseph McCoy sets up. So there's more cattle drives. That's supposed to be a homestead act, which offers cheap land. So places like Nebraska is completely settled or most of the settlement comes from the Homestead Act. Uh, so that's another thing. Remember, it's 1862. Ranches set up, so that's sort of the cattle drives, but you've got your John Elliott in the 1860s leads to more ranches being set up across the West and not just in, you know, in, in Texas. Um, this one down here is the railroad. Obviously, the Railroad Act is passed in 62, same year as the homestead, but isn't completed till 69. And finally, uh, sorry, there's, there's seven. I thought I would have said thing. There's two more. There's lawlessness, as we know, and then there's also Goldman. Remember, lawlessness, we look at the town of Abilene, the cow town, uh, and look at Wild Bill Hickok. Um, and the sort of issues which are going on there. Uh, and then also gold mining, as we know, in uh, California, but also in Colorado and Montana. So today, we're going to know basic facts about each of the Indian wars. We're going to explain the causes and main events of each war and the consequences. And then hopefully the exam question you're going to do in the next lesson we have together is... Uh, it's going to be a narrative account question. So telling that story question, which we've done before, which I'll take you through and I'll ask you to go and do it. Now, we did Little Crow and Sand Creek yesterday, and today we're doing the final one, which is Red Clouds War. So we're going to look at the causes, events and consequence of, it says, you know, this is the lesson for all three. For, but we're going to do Red Clouds today, but yesterday you did uh, Little Crow and Sand Creek. And in an exam, you could be asked one of three things. Um importance, consequences, and narrative accounts. So those are the three questions you have in American West paper. Importance, what was the importance of something? What were the consequences of something? Or a narrative account telling a story about something. So yesterday, as we discussed, there's a really easy way to remember what years the Civil War has happened in. We have 1862, Little Crow, 1864, the Sand Creek Massacre, and 1866 to 68, Red Clouds War. I remember this as two, four, six, eight. And that should help you to remember when. Little Crow, Sand Creek, Red Cloud, two, four, and then Red Cloud goes from six to eight. It's a two, three year war. So it's important that you know the chiefs of all three of the Indian conflicts. Two of them are really easy. One of them you need to remember. Little Crow's War, the chief is 
Little Chrome. I forgot that was in the slideshow. If you heard that noise then of, um, I don't know if it did. If the sound comes up, you know what I'm on about. I forgot that it was in the slideshow. I apologize if you heard that. It's going to come up twice more, so I apologize if it is coming through on this video. The one you need to remember properly is the Sand Creek Massacre because the name of the chief isn't in the title because Sand Creek's where the massacre happens, not the name of the chief. The chief of the tribe who were massacred at Sand Creek was... was black cattle um I, I i hope you can hear what i am because it won't make any sense to you otherwise and finally quite obviously the red cloud chief is <laughs> this red cloud so little crow black cattle and red cloud um so those are the things which you uh, that you need to know the chief's names Right, we're going to go through Red Cloud's War today. So there's some background to it, the events, and then there's a treaty at the end. Now, I did warn yesterday we've got more treaties to come. And this is the second Fort Laramie Treaty of 1868. So the first one is in 1851. And that's that agreement they have where uh, to stop the rising tensions after the gold rush, the government and the American Indians decide to agree to a treaty at Fort Laramie. And in that, they say, right, Indians, you're going to have this bits of land, almost like reservations. We will give you annuities, but you've got to allow us to pass through peacefully and set up railroads and that sort of stuff this is a second one and it's not actually related to the first at all so don't think it's like an extension of fort laramie one because it's not fort laramie two is a completely different treaty and it ends red clouds war so i'm going to read out the information i'd like you to make a little subtitle of causes for me please which is up here and I'm going to read out this information, and there are some questions down the left-hand side. I want you to write the answers to the questions in full sentences, please. You don't need to write the questions. If you don't write in full sentences, please do write the questions out, because you need to be able to refer to them at a later date. Um, let me check I'm recording. I am. So some of them that you don't need to know all the answers to these questions there might be one or two which aren't in here, but let's see what we can get from it. I'll read it first, and then we'll go through and see where the answers are. During the 1862 gold rush, now this is in Montana, which is in the north of America. In fact, let me get a map up. Give me one second. I'm going to get a map and um, we'll go through ge the geography of it. Apologies. So I've now got a map up in front of you. And I'm just going to show you where these three wars happen to give you some context for what's going on. So I won't go into where the Rockies are and the gold, which you should know by now, but we will be doing like a map lesson where we get a map and we chart out every big event and draw the paths of the Oregon Trail and the uh, Transcontinental Railroad and stuff of that nature. However, we know 2468. Two is Little Crow's War in 1862. Four is Sand Creek Massacre in 1864. And six, eight is Red Cloud's War from 1866 to 68. So I'm going to go one, two, three, one being 1862, Little Crow, two, 1864, Sand Creek, and three, 1866 to 68, Red Cloud. Uh, Little Crow's War then in 1862 happens in Minnesota, which is up here. Sand Creek Massacre, 1864, happens in Colorado, which is here. And Red Cloud's War in 1866 to 68 occurs sort of here and i'll draw it over because it does extend into wyoming but it's largely in montana so those are the three areas where the, these 1860s wars between the indians and the whites take place uh and this is you know and it's usually to do with the fact they've been put on reservations uh but the the, the red cloud one is slightly different remember uh little crow's war started because the government uh didn't um uh, provide them uh, with the annuities they promised and they started so that the whites started to attack, uh, sorry, the Indians started to attack the whites in the area and um, the the Sand Creek Massacre started because the dog soldiers of, of, of uh, Black Kettle's tribe did not accept the terms of the Fort Laramie Treaty and then after that, the Treaty of Fort Wise, uh, which moved them onto the Sand Creek Reservation and continued to attack. So Colonel Shevington went in and killed 130 Indians. Red Cloud's War is slightly different. Now, remember, this is the only war which the Indians... Had, well, they do win another battle, but this is one of the few times the Indians actually win in this course. So causes, let's read it together. During the 1862 gold rush, and just to make it clear, the gold rush happens in Montana over here. So... As always, when there's gold, what do the whites do? They chase the gold. So you start having white settlers moving across Montana to get to the gold in 1862. 
The Bozeman Trail cut through Sioux hunting grounds, which broke the 1851 Fort Laramie Treaty. So we know what the Fort Laramie Treaty of 1851 is, where he put them on reservations. Now, that, that arrow I've drawn there, let's pretend that's the Bo- The Bozeman Trail basically was a trail which took people through. Let me remove these, make it a little bit neater. Get rid of that. So gold was found in Montana in 1862. I'd say there. And the Bozeman Trail would carry it was a trail which would take white settlers to the gold rush. And it sort of ran like this. Now, remember, the Fort Laramie Treaty said that if the Indians stick to their land, they have their own hunting grounds and they will not be disturbed. The Bozeman Trail goes through Sioux hunting grounds in Montana, breaking the 1851 Fort Laramie Treaty because they were promised, look, if you move, we'll give you money and we'll leave you alone. And now whites are moving through their land. So as a result, the Sioux begin to attack the miners and settlers who are on the Bozeman Trail. And you do need to know the term Bozeman Trail. So four years later, in 1866, the government started to negotiate and have discussions with the Indians. And the chief of the Sioux at that time was Red Cloud. But he stormed out of the talks when he learned that that even though they were negotiating all of this, the government was still planning to build two forts on the Indian uh, land, which in the Fort Laramie Treaty isn't allowed. Red Cloud and 3,000 Sioux, and he also has another general called Crazy Horse, who we'll come on to in the future, went to war attacking the forts and settlers. So one, two, three, four, five, six questions on your left, folks. If you could pause the video and have a go based on that information there, uh, write in the answers to those in full sentences, then we'll uh, unpause it and we'll green pen them together. Off you go. So who was Red Cloud and who was he the leader of? You should have uh, had to go yourself at this point, but you should have written in full sentences that Red Cloud was the chief of the Sioux in Montana. Do learn how to spell Sioux, folks. Very important. Name of the, the shortcut was the Bozeman. Bozeman Trail. Why was the use of this trail a problem for Red Cloud? Because it broke the Fort Laramie Treaty, because it was going over Indian, Indian hunting ground, which they needed because they weren't allowed to live a nomadic life anymore. So I'm just going to put broke, FLT, and obviously that's the answer to the next one. Uh, so maybe you want to put in the third one, but it went over Indian hunting ground and that broke the Fort Laramie Treaty. Um, this one isn't in there, uh, so don't worry about that. What did Red Cloud learn about the U.S. Army and the Bozeman Trail even before he met to negotiate? But they were planning to build two forts on there. So, there was, you know, even though they were meeting, they're still going to break the, the treaty further. Build two forts. So that's the causes. Basically, again, like in Little Crow's War, the Treaty of Fort Laramie has been broken. Little Crow's War, they were promised annuities and supplies, and the government actually withheld them to make the Sioux, uh, to make Little Crow's tribe um, sort of pay more money for it and 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 starve. So they provoked them into it. So let's go on to the events. So there's four, uh, there's five um, um, questions there. We'll read it together, then I'll let you answer them. So, as we said, Red Cloud and 3,000 3, suit plus Crazy Horse then went to war attacking forts and settlers. Um, so the Fetterman Massacre is the key battle you need to know about. Now, remember, a massacre is where one side does all the killing. And in this case, the Indians do all the killing to a, white, a group of white people. So in December 1866, Captain William Fetterman, who was a captain in the, in the, in the American White Army, and eight of his soldiers rode into a Sioux trap of 1,000 warriors. And they were all massacred in scalp. Remember, scalps where they like cut the top of their head off. Uh, the Sioux then blockaded the Bozeman Trail so no one could pass it. This was a major success for Red Cloud and the Sioux and, uh, and the Sioux, and the worst defeat for the U.S. Army in the West. The government admitted defeat. They recognized Red Cloud as a fantastic general and war leader and changed its policy, which led to the 1868 Fort Laramie Treaty number two. So what did he decide to do against the Red Army? It doesn't really say here, but have a think about why Red Cloud has an advantage in this situation, in this war. Really engage your critical thinking skills. And then three things. Describe a tactic used against Cal- uh, Captain William Fetterman. What happened to Fetterman and his men and what is the event known as? Pause the video and have a go at those, please. And then unpause and green pen. 
So, in this section, you should have put that you got 3,000 soldiers and crazy horse and attack the forts and settlers. 3,000 plus crazy horse and attack the forts and settlers. Now, this is basically, and some of you know about military history will be aware, this was basically guerrilla tactics. And by that, I mean, they didn't like charge around making themselves known and seen. They do it very sneakily and under quiet, but little attacks here, little attacks there. So the, the enemy never really saw them. And this leads into why Red Cloud had an advantage. He knew the territory. The Whites were just following the Bozeman Trail. They didn't really know much about Montana. It wasn't massively settled. They just knew there was gold there. Red Cloud knew this territory inside out. He knew where the hills were. He knew where the valleys were. He knew where to attack. He knew where to camp out. He had knowledge of the territory. So I think knowledge of the territory is fundamental. Takes me a while to write this out because I'm on my mouse. So the tactic used against Captain William Fetterman, it was a trap. Basically, they lured um, them into a valley and then they came down behind them and, and killed them. And we'll come into that into more detail in the future. They were killed and scalped and it's known as the Fetterman Massacre. And that was in December of the year 1866 when the war started. I'm not going to write the event. You can see it's the Fetterman Massacre, which is there. That's the answer to number three. So what were the consequences of this war? Well, we've got another treaty, which is very, very exciting. The second Fort Laramie Treaty, obviously they accepted after the Fetterman Massacre that he probably weren't going to beat Red Cloud. So they changed the tactics and came to a negotiation. Now, remember, folks, the government have broken the Treaty of Fort Laramie and the Treaty of Fort Wise. They are not to be trusted in this matter. But they signed the second Fort Laramie Treaty. The Fort Laramie Treaty of 1868. The government then agreed to close the Bozeman Trail and forts along it. And Red Cloud and the Sioux would move his people to the Great Sioux Reservation in Dakota. So I'll just go back to the map uh, for a second. So he would move from here over to there. He'd move out the way, which is basically to allow the whites to, to go and get the gold. But they would close the Bozeman Trail, which wouldn't interfere with their hunting grounds anymore. So not all of those who fought with Red Cloud agreed with signing a treaty. They wanted to fight and continue to defeat the the, the, the Americans and uh, the chief sitting bull and crazy horse who both fought with him. They actually disagreed with the decision. So what did the government agree to do and what did the Dakota Sioux agree to do? It's all there. So just write it in full sentences for me and then we'll carry on. I think this is a really good diagram. It shows the cycle of Indian uh, American conflict in the 1860s. Step one is the US government make a treaty with the tribe. So the main one is the 1851 Fort Laramie Treaty. We also got the 1862 Fort Wise Treaty, which moved uh, Black Kettle's tribe onto the Sand Creek Reservation. That always happens because basically the whites and the Indians can't get on when the whites move into Indian land, which breaks previous treaties like the 1831 Trade and Intercourse Act. But anyway, because they're chasing the gold or they're chasing escape from persecution like the Mormons or they're on the trains or they're, you know, anything like that, um, or they're cowboys, they come into contact, they fall out, there's conflict, so they make a tribe. And then these treaties, step two, the government make promises um, about annuities um, or about uh, protection or not invading or not going to hunting land. And to get these guarantees, the Plains Indians often give up their land and money or get on smaller reservations. Now, at some point, the government uh, the government or the settlers or the army break the treaty. So in 62, the agency, which was looking after the reservation of um, Little Crow's tribe, didn't give them the annuities and didn't give them the food because they were in debt and then it took some of the land off them. In 64, Colonel Shivington just attacked them because some dog soldiers were doing some attacking. And in 66 to 68, Red Clouds or the Bozeman Trail, um, the settlers were breaking the Fort Laramie Treaty by going across uh montana uh, on the bozeman trail now because they're they've been lied to inevitably the plain indians rebel and fight back and the only well i guess they do in 1864 a little bit because they they attack uh, the dog soldiers do 62 little crow attacks the white settlements kills 700 white settlers and in 66 68 red cloud does the fetima massacre um as a result, the army is sent in and defeat the Plains Indians. Uh, doesn't happen in Red Cloud, but happens in Little Crow and in uh, Sand Creek. 
And in the final, go, uh, because of uh, the, the fighting, the tribal leaders are forced into further co- negotiations with the US government to solve the conflict, which leads to another treaty, and the cycle begins again. If I'd like you to make a copy of that cycle, please, because it sums up these wars pretty well. And that concludes our lesson on Red Cloud and concludes our lessons on the Indian Wars of the 1860s. Hopefully you've now got a decent idea of the causes, events and consequences of Little Crow's War, of the Sand Creek Massacre and of Red Cloud's War and are able to distinguish between the three of them. Next time I see you, we're going to do a narrative account question. I'm going to show you how to do it and then you're going to go and write it and you'll get some feedback from me. We're going to start with what's on the screen now, which is putting all the key terms with the correct conflict, Sand Creek, Red Cloud, or Little Crow. So, for example, you know Red Cloud goes to Red Cloud. Um, so if you want to practice that now, it would help because it will mean you're, you're ready to go next time we're together. Uh, so have a go at that. Please upload your uh, notes onto um, the Firefly task. You can't click complete until you have uploaded them. And finally, um, there's an educate which you need to do. At the minute, only 10 of you have completed the Educate from yesterday, and I am compiling a list of people who are not doing my Educates, and they will be receiving phone calls home in the near future. So please try and get your Educates cleared up, folks, or else I cannot see how much you understand the topics covered. I hope today's lesson makes sense. Please email me if you need any further help, and have a lovely day. See you later.